नमस्कार अ वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एन इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज अभिनीत शुक्ला एंड विद मी इज सारा मुश्तबा ब्रिंग ग्लिम्स ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शेल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर द हेडलाइंस एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया डॉक्टर एस जयशंकर टू ज्वाइन एस सीओ काउंसिल ऑफ फॉरन मिनिस्टर्स मीटिंग इन टाशकन India objects to activities or projects on Park occupied Kashmir as a violation and infringement of its sovereignty and territorial integrity. India and Russia hold talks in Moscow on United Nations related issues. President of Maldives Ibrahim Mohamed Saleh to visit India from 1st to 4th of August. In Iraq, hundreds of protesters breached a high security zone in Baghdad and broke into country's parliament building. Gas prices jump after Russia cuts further gas supplies to Germany and other Central European countries. Bangladesh denies that it has sought a bailout loan from International Monetary Fund. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates 44th FIDE Chess Olympiad at Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Chennai. And Commonwealth Games 2022 to commence at Birmingham in UK tonight. External Affairs Minister of India Dr S Jayashankar left for Tashkent this evening on a two day visit to Uzbekistan. He will take part in the meeting of the SCO Council of Foreign Ministers. The leaders will discuss preparations for the upcoming meeting of the Council of Heads of State on 15th and 16th of September in Samarkand. They will review the expansion of the SCO and exchange ideas on regional and global issues. The SCO comprises eight member states. India, Kazakhstan, China, Kyrgyz Republic, Pakistan, Russia, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. There are four observer states: Afghanistan, Belarus, Iran and Mongolia. India's external affairs ministry has reiterated that the entire union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is part of India. Replying to a media query, ministry spokesperson Narendra Bakshi said, India objects to the activities or projects in Park occupied Kashmir as it violates and infringes its sovereignty and territorial integrity. CPEC pe hamara statement pichle hafte aaya tha jisme humne do cheezon ka kafi clarity se kaha tha ek ki Jammu and Kashmir mein Pakistan occupied Kashmir jo hai usme is tarah ke koi activities ho to wo hamare sovereignty territorial integrity ke khilaf hai. तो उसमें हम ऑब्जेक्ट करते हैं और दूसरा कि कोई तीसरी देश इसमें न जुड़े क्योंकि हम पहले से चेतावनी दे रहे हैं हमारे सॉवेंटी की बात है ऑन द एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ फॉर डेमोक्रेसी एक्टिविस्ट बाय म्यांमार रूलिंग जनता मिस्टर बागची सेड इंडिया हैज नोटेड द डेवलपमेंट्स इन म्यांमार विद डीप कंसर्न ही सेड द रूल ऑफ लॉ एंड डेमोक्रेटिक प्रोसेस मस्ट बी अपहेल्ड ही स्टेटेड दैट इंडिया विल कंटिन्यू टू सपोर्ट म्यांमार रिटर्न टू डेमोक्रेसी एंड स्टेबिलिटी we have noted of course these developments in myanmar with a deep concern as a neighboring country myanmar we have always highlighted the need for a peaceful resolution to the issue the rule of law and democratic process must be upheld as a friend of the people of myanmar we will continue to support myanmar's return to democracy and stability replying to another query the spokesperson said India participated in an international conference hosted by Uzbekistan in Tashkent on the 26th of this month on Afghanistan. On 26th the Uzbekistan hosted an international conference on Afghanistan in Tashkent which was attended by special representatives senior officials from almost 20 countries and there were UN representatives as well as international representatives of international organizations this is a continuation i would say of our efforts to engage with the international community on issues related to Afghanistan during this conference india reiterated commitment to assist the afghan people in these difficult times and to provide them humanitarian assistance we also reiterated un security council resolution 259 3 which calls for afghan soil not to be used to plan or finance or conduct any terror activities in today's hot spot section we bring you a discussion on sco foreign ministers meet and its significance in conversation with veena sikri former diplomat and simran sodhi journalist today we are discussing the the shanghai corporation organization ministerial meeting which is taking place in tashkent where we have india being represented by the external affairs minister dr s jayashankar but as the secretary when we see that this is a forum which will see the indian external affairs minister being in the same place as the pakistan foreign minister and also the chinese foreign minister 
how crucial do you think this is for the region and especially for india given the fact that we've had some tense relationships with both china and pakistan in the recent past this is a very important meeting of the shanghai cooperation organization the sco and i think it's very important that our external affairs minister is personally going to be present in tashkent for this foreign minister meeting because we know that a few months later maybe in september there is a summit meeting of the sco plan and inviting him to attend the summit meeting in Tashkent so it is very significant that this meeting is taking place as a preparatory meeting and certainly the sco is scheduled to discuss all issues of regional and global concern so that covers a lot of the events which are currently going on the ukraine war and economic situation and so on but the focus of attention is a lot on whether there will be a bilateral meeting between Chinese foreign minister Wang Yi and uh, our external affairs minister Dr Jay Shankar it is interesting because in july itself on july 7th in bali when there was a g20 meeting at the foreign minister level our two foreign ministers china and india did have a bilateral and um, i think that was another opportunity for both sides to explain the situation that they wanted to uh, discuss what is happening at the border how do we overcome the situation how do we go back to the situation before may 20 so this is a very significant aspect we also know that foreign minister wang yi visited india in the month of march again looking at discussions on these subjects and seeing how we could move ahead in the bilateral discussions on this very important subject but as we know that after the march meeting the meeting of the military commanders has been considerably delayed it there was one meeting then there was a gap of several months and then after the july 7 meeting there has been a meeting of the military commanders between china and india at the border in ladakh but we do know that in that meeting there was not much progress at all so it is really a very disappointing situation and the situation is not seeing any movement towards uh, you know getting back to the situation which existed at the border before may 2020 so it is worrisome and one hopes that if there is a bilateral this situation we covered the other issue that is of great interest and which people are looking at is the possibility of a bilateral between our external affairs minister dr jay shankar and the pakistan foreign minister bilawal bhutto there is no mention or indication or talk from either side is going to be any bilateral so it might just be in the nature of a pull aside during the meeting immediately after the meeting a more informal change of views between the two foreign ministers of india and pakistan rather than any formal there is no formal information about this certainly the other great um, matter of interest that uh, comes up when i said i said the meeting between the prime minister of india and uh, president xi jinping of china which could happen in september so obviously a preparation for that possible meeting is very important and then after this india is going to assume the chairmanship of the sco so that is also another very interesting important aspect so all in all the two day visit with today and tomorrow of our external affairs minister to tashkent is being watched with keen interest as a secretary we have also seen in the past week both the indian and the pakistani foreign ministry have also exchanged some harsh words over what we are hearing is the decision between beijing and islamabad to now extend the china pakistan economic corridor to third countries like afghanistan the ministry of external affairs had called the cpec proposal inherently illegal illegitimate and unacceptable and while the pakistan foreign ministry has said india's objections are an effort to politicize the project do you feel that the fact that bilawal bhutto is also present there and we also seen that the india pakistan relation in the last year is one of the relationships that has really gone down in terms of trust deficit do you feel that this forum also offers an opportunity we are yet not sure if there will be a bilateral meeting between dr jay shankar and bilawal bhutto but do you think at least there is an opportunity for both parties to talk and to discuss many of the issues on table especially what we've seen in the last week the extension of cpec to third countries like afghanistan i think uh, obviously such forums such conferences are important and useful because you do have discussions on the side but i think india has made its position very very clear and there is completely unequivocal position and there is no absolutely no scope for any change because right from the time that the cpec started india has made very clear that we do not accept at all that the cpec should pass through pakistan occupied kashmir 
we feel that this is an infringement, a complete infringement on Indian sovereignty because as we know, that is absolutely POK is a part of India. There is a all-party consensus parliamentary resolution on this and it is fully in keeping with the accession of the whole of Jammu and Kashmir to India. And so I think that India's position has been conveyed unequivocally and reiterated, as you said, very recently by our spokesperson. So all there is any discussion, the respect for sovereignty is a cardinal principle of the SCO, of BRICS and others. So obviously India will get the opportunity once more to place its position unequivocally on this subject and to convey to China and to Pakistan whether in an informal meeting, in a formal meeting, whether in the conference, on every occasion, India will take every occasion to convey its unequivocal position on the CPEC to anybody who is willing to discuss, who is willing to hear and in the conference. So I think that this opportunity to convey India's position in person is a very valuable one. There are so many other um, issues that uh, the SCO will be looking at. You know, there's a question of Iran. Uh, they are trying to become a full member that is under discussion. We know that Russia and China are very keen to expand organizations like BRICS and maybe they will bring it up again in SCO as well because they are looking to get more and more people on their side, part of this uh, whole uh, new geopolitical situation created by the uh, what is happening in Ukraine. So this is a very, very difficult moment in world politics. And I think that India being there at the conference is very valuable because we'll get a first-hand knowledge of what is going on and we will get the opposition also unequivocally. So I'm sure that Tanil Affairs uh, Minister's participation in this conference will be keenly watched and very, very important as well. Ambassador Sikri, we also see that SEO is a regional organization where we have India, we have Russia, Pakistan, China, we have leaders from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan. The question is how much is the Ukraine war casting a shadow on the workings of the SCO and how much do you think the SCO need is likely to be affected by the Ukraine war and the multiple issues we are seeing globally which are emerging because of what we are seeing in Ukraine? Certainly the issue of energy security and food security, these are two critical issues facing the world today and I think that uh, SCO will certainly look at these issues and uh, talk about them and uh, will discuss them because it's impacting the individual countries as well as the regional and global situation. So I think that there will be certainly discussions on the situation. There is also the issue of counterterrorism, of security cooperation, of you know making quite clear India's very, very strong position against uh, counterterrorism, against the activities of terrorists and fundamentalist groups. So this too, India will be speaking very, very clearly, uh, will not be mincing its words on this subject. So these issues will certainly come up. It's not a very long meeting. It's a brief meeting, but every country will get uh, the option, the privilege and the possibility of stating their views. And India will be unhesitatingly state its views on these subjects. Certainly, there will be a joint statement and we will see what they will come up as an agreed statement on this subject. But all the countries, the countries of Central Asia, countries of South Asia, the whole world, the food security and energy security is today the top of the agenda. And countries of this region are as affected by it because resulting from the Ukraine crisis as all other countries in the world. I'd like to add here that, you know, India has played a very positive role in ensuring food security for other countries. And India has unhesitatingly exported food and grains to countries who were in dire need and where their supplies, like Egypt, for example, where supplies had been immediately stopped what they were expecting from Ukraine in a normal course. So India has unhesitatingly played its part, a very positive role in contributing to uh, global food security. And energy security, of course, we ourselves are very affected and we ourselves have worked out with Russia to get discounted prices of energy. Thank you. Thank you. In some more news, India and Russia held consultations in Moscow on Thursday on United Nations related issues. These include the agenda of the UN Security Council and recent developments. The External Affairs Ministry said both sides agreed to deepen cooperation on counter-terrorism at UN and other multilateral platforms. The Indian delegation briefed Russia on its priorities during its upcoming presidency of the UNSC in December this year. Secretary West, Ministry of External Affairs, Sanjay Verma, led the Indian delegation, while the Russian delegation was led by Russian Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sergei Vasilevich Veshinin. Maritime history was created today with the Indian Navy taking delivery of the prestigious indigenous aircraft carrier Vikrant, built by the Cochin Shipyard. 
द कमांडिंग ऑफिसर डेजिग्नेट ऑफ विक्रांत कॉमोडो विद्याधर हारके एंड द चेयरमैन एंड मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ कोच एंड शिप यार्ड मधु एस नायर साइंट द डॉक्यूमेंट रिलेटेड टू द डिलीवरी ऑफ द वेसल रिपोर्ट With the delivery of the IAC, India joined a select group of nations having the niche capability to indigenously design and build an aircraft carrier. The 262 meter long aircraft carrier is the largest ever warship to be built in the country. The vessel, which has a displacement of 45,000 tons, has been built at an overall cost of close to 20,000 crore rupees. The IAC is capable of operating 30 aircraft comprising MiG 29K fighter jets, CAMOV 31, MH60R multi-role helicopters in addition to indigenously manufactured advanced light helicopters and light combat aircraft. The vessel has the facility for short takeoff but arrested landing and is equipped with a ski jump for launching aircraft besides a set of arrestor wires for their recovery on board. The vessel is powered by Four gas turbines totaling 88 megawatt power and has a maximum speed of 28 knots. The vessel is scheduled to be commissioned and inducted into the services of the Indian Navy by next month. With an overall indigenous content of 76%, IAC is a perfect example of the nation's quest for Atmanirbhar Bharat and provides thrust to the government's Make in India initiative. With Raj Mohan, this is Ramya, AIR News. The Indian Navy received two MH-60R multi-role helicopters from the United States at the Cochin International Airport on Thursday. The copters were delivered by the Special Air Assignment Mission Flight of the U.S. Air Force. The helicopters are part of the 24 MH-60R multi-role helicopters being procured by India from the United States at a cost of over 14,000 crore rupees. President of Maldives, Ibrahim Mohamed Soleh, will pay an official visit to India from the 1st to 4th of August. He will be accompanied by high-level officials and business delegation. Briefing media New Delhi this evening, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Narendra Bhakti said, President Soleil will meet President Draupadi Murmu and hold talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. External Affairs Minister Dr. Ajay Shankar will call on President Soleil. Besides his official engagements in New Delhi, President Soleil will be holding discussion with an Indian business delegation. He will also visit Mumbai and participate in business events there. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the news. Former Pakistan's Prime Minister and leader of Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Party, PTI, Imran Khan, has moved the High Court to dismiss Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and his cabinet. The petition filed by senior PTI leaders Andalib Abbas and Hassan Niazi is being seen as an attempt to corner Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and his principal secretary on money laundering charges. According to reports, despite money laundering cases against the Prime Minister, he and his cabinet undertook a trip to London to meet the proclaimed offenders in the case, which was in clear violation of the law. Bangladesh has strongly denied that it has sought a bailout loan from the International Monetary Fund, IMF. It was reported in Bangladeshi media that it has sought a loan of 4.5 billion US dollars from the IMF in view of its dwindling foreign currency reserves. Principal Secretary to the Prime Minister, Dr. Ahmed Kaikosh, told the media that Bangladesh has enough currency reserves to meet the import bill for over five months. He said, Bangladesh has sought a soft-term loan from the IMF for balance of payment and budget support in view of the volatile world situation. Dr. Kaikosh said that such a loan has been taken by Bangladesh earlier also from the IMF on a couple of other occasions. Meanwhile, the IMF has said that it would discuss with Bangladesh its loan request. Gas prices jumped after Russia further cut gas supplies to Germany and other Central European countries after threatening to earlier this week. European gas prices rose almost 2%, trading close to the record high set after Russia invaded Ukraine. Critics accused the Russian government of using gas as a political weapon. Russia has been cutting flows through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline to Germany with it now operating at least than at less than a fifth of its normal capacity. Before the Ukraine war Germany imported over half of its gas from Russia and most of it came through Nord Stream 1 with the rest coming from land-based pipelines. By the end of June that had reduced to just over a quarter. Hundreds of protesters have breached a high security zone in Baghdad and broken into Iraq's parliament building. The supporters of cleric Muqtada al-Sadr opposed the nomination of a rival candidate for prime minister. 
Mr. Sadd's political alliance won the most seats in last October's general election, but it is not in power due to political deadlock following the vote. Police reportedly fired tear gas and water cannon at the protesters. No lawmaker was present at the time. The group penetrated Baghdad's closely guarded green zone, which is home to a number of the capital city's most important buildings, including embassies. Iraq's current Prime Minister Mustafa al-Kadhimi called, called on protesters to leave the building while the crowd sang, danced and lay on tables. Time now for some interesting stories from across the globe. Welcome to Kaleidoscope. Friends, what if one fine day you wake up and find reptiles crawling in your neighborhood? That too alligators. It's not only scary but also unbelievable. But it actually happened in Vagodia area of Vadodara in Gujarat. Recently, Gujarat witnessed torrential rains and crocodiles had no option but to take refuge in the drains. The locals in the area were shocked and suspect that the reptiles came from Vishwamitri River, which is several kilometers away from the area. According to a report by the Times of India, the river is home to over 300 crocodiles and amid heavy rainfall, the crocodiles take shelter inside the storm water drains and underground drainage lines. Neha Patel, an animal activist who rescues crocodiles, says that crocodiles travel several kilometers unnoticed through these drains. Can you see the Animals have huge amount of physical endurance, intelligence and stamina. Recently, a stunning world record has been set by a guinea pig named Coco in the United States. Guinness World Records in a release said that Coco from North Carolina completed the most tricks done by a guinea pig in one minute. Coco, an approximately five-year-old male Abyssinian guinea pig, is in good health. Its owner Gwen adopted it from an animal shelter in December 2018. Gwen began teaching Coco through a trick certification program after witnessing its boundless energy and interest. The guinea pig quickly mastered over 70 tricks and became a trick champion. The video of Coco performing tricks was shared on the official page of Guinness World Records on Twitter and Facebook as well. In just two days, it accumulated over 40,000 views, also matched more than 1,000 likes and varied comments. One user commented, never realized guinea pigs were so trainable. Wow. The other said, love the way you say sorry and please to Coco. I'm sure he appreciates your polite manners. This is just fantastic. <laughs> Technology is the root of almost everything we do. And in this story, we tell you about the fire services using emerging technologies like robots. It not only douses fires, but also saves firemen's lives. In a first, the Delhi Fire Department used two robots to douse a blaze that had broken out in a three-story plastic godown in Samaipur Badli near Rohini Jail. No injuries or casualties were reported. No one was injured in the massive blaze, which took more than 10 hours to control. That's all in this edition of Kaleidoscope. Namaskar. On to sports now. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the 44th Chess Olympiad at Chennai in Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium today. While welcoming the Grand Masters of Chess and participants from all over the world, the Prime Minister expressed hope that the 44th Chess Olympiad will be an enriching experience for everyone. Chess lovers from all over the world, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the 44th Chess Olympiad being held in India. The most prestigious tournament in chess has come to India, the home of chess. This tournament is here at a special time in India's history. This is the year we are marking 75 years of freedom 
फ्रॉम कॉलोनियल रूल इट इज अवर आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव Hailing Tamil Nadu's strong historical connection with chess, the Prime Minister asserted that the place at which it is happening is the most fitted for the event. Mr. Modi stressed on encouraging sporting talent and infrastructure in the country. The torch which crossed the 75 iconic cities of the country was brought to the stadium by Vishwanath Anand and was handed over to Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chief Minister M K Stalin. And was later given to the latest chess prodigy, Grand Master Ramesh Babu Pragnananda. Speaking at the inauguration, FIFA President Arkady Dvorkovich said it was a memorable moment to witness the various cultures representing the states of India. The Commonwealth Games 2022 are all set to kick start in Birmingham tonight. The sports extravaganza will witness the participation of 54 countries, featuring more than 5,000 athletes competing for a podium finish. The event will be held till the 8th of August. A 215-member Indian contingent, which includes 111 male players and 104 female players, will compete in 15 sporting events in Birmingham. With Neeraj Chopra missing the games due to an injury, P.V. Sindhu and Manpreet Singh will be India's flag bearers at Birmingham. Today is World Nature Conservation Day. The day is observed to create awareness of the importance of protecting our natural resources. Conservation of resources has an important role in protecting the Mother Earth. And now, now let's take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Globe and Mail report: Ukraine steps up drive to retake Russian-controlled Kherson region with air strikes. The Financial Times writes: United States of America enters a technical recession after contraction in second quarter growth. The Wall Street Journal reports. JetBlue agrees to buy Spirit Airlines for 3.8 billion dollars. The Washington Post says Saudi Crown Prince to meet Macron as Khashoggi group urges prosecution in France. The Guardian writes United Kingdom in diplomatic standoff over deletion of abortion rights from gender statement. The Sydney Morning Herald: France and Australia renew military ties after submarines fallout. South China Morning Post says U.S. aircraft carrier group heads towards Taiwan as tension over Nancy Pelosi's possible visit continues to grow. And Japan Times reports Taiwan's Tsai Ing-wen meets Japan ex-defense minister and hopes to bolster ties. A quick look at the headlines once again. External Affairs Minister of India Dr S Jayashankar to join SCO Council of Foreign Ministers meeting in Tashkent. India objects to activities or projects in Pak occupied Kashmir as a violation and infringement of its sovereignty and territorial integrity. India and Russia hold talks in Moscow on United Nations related issues. President of Maldives Ibrahim Mohammed Saleh to visit India from 1st to the 4th of August. In Iraq, hundreds of protesters breached a high-security zone in Baghdad and broke into country's parliament building. Gas prices jump after Russia cuts further gas supplies to Germany and other Central European countries. Bangladesh denies that it has sought a bailout loan from International Monetary Fund. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates 44th FIDE Chess Chess Olympiad at Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Chennai. And Commonwealth Games 2022 to commence at Birmingham in UK tonight. And now before we end let us listen to Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan Vaishnav Jan by artists from Peru on their independence day. Vaishnav Jan ko tere ka hi e peer bara
And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time with the next edition of World News.